The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi everyone, Basil Chapman, Friday, and this is the end of the week, middle of the month, June the 17th, and an extremely oversold condition is unfolding in many areas, many stocks. That doesn't guarantee that the market has to notice it. In fact, remember the market, like, you, like a coin being spun, heads or tails, the coin doesn't know. So what we're looking at here is that if you look at the technical side of the picture, the weekly and monthly, this middle chart is, is the weekly, this one on the right is the monthly. These are really poor looking charts. And what it suggests is that we could start looking at some positions with a chance that they could be moving higher over a series of weeks. They might not have formed the base, their base yet, but it's an opportunity, what I said to subscribers, this is the first opportunity I'm looking at where I think we can start putting on some positions and using some of that really, the, the, the huge amount of cash that we built up as a resource. But even then, in a market like this, have we resolved anything in the oil situation? Well, if you look at oil, it's down sharply again today, down 3.3%. At 112.01 in the continuous contract. If you look at the SCO, which is the inversion, the the short side of oil is done very nicely, having gone from about 18 to 20.43 right now. Um, but has that have we solved resolved or solved anything in the whole oil area in terms of uh, the distribution, in terms of production? I, that's still sitting there as really uh, an issue. A, a geopolitical issue in the sense that it affects so many countries. So that's that's not really resolved. If we're looking at yields, yes, there's been a lovely turnaround from the low yesterday uh, where the TLT went to 107, was that 83? Let me just check. Uh, uh, the low was 108.12. That's right, 108.12. And trading right now three points, more than three points high at 111.73. Nice action. Wait a minute, nice action. What are we talking about? Three weeks ago, it was up in the 120 area. 120 to 108, just in the most recent time. 155 from December in six months. From December down to 108. This, this is not a stock. This is not an, an IPO. This is not uh, one of your SPACs. This is not one of your um, positions in the uh, in the highly leveraged tech area, this this is the Treasury bond ETF, the 20-year iShare, um, 155 down to 100. And that that I mean that is really serious. All right. So within that context, um, that's not resolved at all. If you're looking at the um, higher yields, TNX.X, look what happened here. Look at that spiral to the upside. Made a peak D. It is pulling back now, and it's almost at the high that was made at peak F in the Chapman Wave on the 9th of May. All right, so let's go through these different uh, uh, different aspects that we've been talking about. How could you really resolve anything at this particular point uh, for an intermediate-term trade? The volatility index is an issue. The VIX, V-I-X dot X. Um, it's trading down a dollar and a quarter at 31.69. It did not make new recovery highs in the last few days, even with the terrible action in the market. The high of the, 6th, the 13th of uh, June, was that ex uh, 13th of June? Was that Monday? Well, 13th of June uh, was a high of 30, 31.37, uh, sorry, high of 35.05. I should type that in, 35.05, and here we are a whole week later with much lower prices in stocks, and it's at 31.68, having not taken that out. So in a sense, that's a good sign 
But the fact that we're in the 30s still, that means there's a lot of buying of, of, of some kind of, let's call it security, some kind of insurance. So, and if you look at the weekly chart, you remember I drew this in as a resistance, Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone. And that's been working since the 38.94 high uh, back in January uh, the 28th. The week of the 28th, Fed, Russia, Ukraine, everything going on. And yet we haven't taken that out. So I'm looking at this and I'm saying, okay, for subscribers to my opening call, this is where we can start stepping in just a little bit more to say what what evidence is there to say that we are extremely oversold and will that evidence be uh, will that permeate the market by having a rally even if there's a lower low to come and then maybe Tuesday Wednesday of next week we start a turnaround that says okay now we can look at three to four maybe even five weeks of upside move it's going to take a lot to do that but there are signs there are a number of signs a number of signs are saying that in the in the H pattern, now let me go through these uh, separately. In the H pattern, the S and P took out the left side low of 38.10 back in May. It made a low yesterday of 36.39.77. It's up only 21 points at 36.88 now. But this is the area with the stochastic at 9% under 10%, 9%. The on balance volume making a W formation. The stochastic. Um, Nine period moving average. That, that's the nine. That is how do I explain that? The faster moving average of the stochastic is uh, just trying its best to turn over the above the green. Uh, the green is above the red. That's important. The MACD is horrible. The, the expansion of the vertical lines. That's the um, histogram zero percent line. It's still expanding today. Maybe it's just a little bit less, uh, but it needs a lot of work to turn positive. The nine period over the 14, no, it's under, well under the 14, and that means to, to break above, you would have to see the S&P somewhere filling in one of those gaps, trying to get to the 38, 98, 30, uh, 30, uh, 38, yeah, 38, 98 to the 39, 20 area over the next week or two without taking out 36, I'd say 36, 32 would be really key support. So this is the start of something. To get those V-shaped turnarounds that we love to see, for those of us who've been in the business a long time, that VIX would have to be so disappointed in the market action that it screams into, doesn't have to go above 36.54 on a closing basis, but it should pierce it intraday at least to say, hey, this is horrible action. I, I, I'm desperate. I'm throwing everything out with the, more, the baby with the bathwater. Um, but in fact... We're not doing that. So this is now a process. And all I can say is that as a process, we can step up to the plate, but we don't, we still have to have stops. I've widened the stops a little bit at this particular point, but that's the way it is. So um, I wanted to show that. I wanted to show the QQQ within the context of the art formation. We took out the left side low. We had three sessions to break and close uh, sharply above the left side low of 280.21. Nope. Then we went down to 269.28. So the process says now you've got to get a buy signal in the to turn around. IWF also very up. I have today. I'll be back. There's a lot of school to discuss. How the Chapman Tiger Dickinson's hour. In a time of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect the hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a tier one mining district. This is a large scale, low cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd feasibility study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16-year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ.
Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Well, folks, we're back. Just as we're about to go to uh, show some of the stocks, I, I, I had a question. Could I just show my work on the, uh, uh, the chapter wave methodology on the uh, one minute ESU 22? Yeah, there it is. There's a left side, right side price time match from the low that was made at about 9.30 this morning at 36.71. Screams up to a high of peak D. Remember the Chapman Wave, we're always looking for the fourth highest peak, peak D. And then other things can happen. Well, D was the turning point at 9.56, at uh, 37.11, 75. And it pulled back, and it went almost to in the same time as the left side, right side price time match. Remember, I always say, watch these arch formations or inverted V-shaped formations or cup formations. It's so often that the price just has its move to the upside and then very calmly reverses and has the move back again to the other side for a left side, right side price time match. And you don't have to have a crash. It just comes down. But very often... Going to the upside, it works its way and then sort of stalls at the top. Coming down, it has an acceleration to the downside. Like the last two, three bars, there's a one-minute chart, or like crash mode, going from 36.90 down to 36.72. And here we are. So we've got about another two, three minutes to see if it's going to test the low that was made at 9.30, which is 36.71. Okay, let's get back to our story here. Oh, and I, I did want to talk about just the moving averages. Look at this, the 200 period moving average. Once it broke down in the in the E-mini, this is the uh, September. Uh, once it broke down in the, at 150 yesterday in the afternoon at the 3789 level, that 200 period moving was useless, didn't even need it. But as you get closer and closer and closer, look at that, the orange line. Look how it, it became a repellent, a magnet, and then a repellent zone. At some point today, we'll see. Does it become a magnet again at 3708 and then move above it one to one to the upside? We'll see. It's options, expiration, futures, observation, big, a big session today. We'll see what happens. Let me go back yet to what I was discussing. I wanted to go through a couple of things. I'll do this on the way so I don't forget it. I was asked about the FXI. I've looked at it all week and I've said, yes, the FXI's had a really nice move. It made a peak E in the Chapman Wave about six, seven sessions ago. It's pulling back. It's at 32.10. This is the this is the China large cap ETF. Uh, if it's able at any point next week to get close to 34.35, 
then the 35, 35, 200 period exponential moving average will become a magnet up until then. It's kind of a repellent zone. And you can see in the weekly chart, we've just gone from the H pattern that I always talk about, the lowercase h that can go to a lowercase m. And there it is. There's your second arch formation. It had a successful test of the left side low, and it's holding very nicely right on, in fact, sitting right on the weekly 14 period exponential moving average. I like the action so far, and what I'd said is, yes, it is acting well, but, but my biggest concern was we have enough trouble with, with stocks in the United States. We are going over to, to China. You've got to know what your, your limits are. You've got to know what, your, uh, what, what tensions can evolve and what uh, the market could reflect very quickly, negative action and even positive action. So just know that, and that's fine. Queb was the next one. I was asked about Queb, which is the... This is the um, a crane share CSI China Internet ETF had a fabulous move. I haven't notated it, but it always choose the obvious lowest low bar. Count each successively peak. Here it is, peak A, right there. Peak B, right there. Next highest peak is peak C, right there. And it went to a D. And D's where other things can happen. And here we are, choppy, choppy, choppy for the last week in a range between about 20, 2870 and 34 and we're at 30.86 right now digesting the gains it did make a higher high than the left side low so the next side left side high of uh early april so that says that's this is peak a in the week oh peak a in the weekly chart right there i believe that's a b let me just check that out so that means the high was Something happening I should know about. Uh, yes. So that's a little higher. I believe this is a C. I'll have to come back to it for some reason. Market uh, is not letting me do something here. I'm going to call it B for now. I'll come back and check it. Yes. Yeah, so this is starting a move up. It had an Eiffel Tower move from back in 2019. Screens up to 104 comes all the way back down in the shortest time frame. That's what we call the Eiffel Tower. Looks like an uppercase A, straight up, straight down. The next question I had was, would I look at the GDX? So let's do that now because I want to go to gold. One of the things that I always look at in the Chapman Wave methodology is how quickly and how short in, in, in length is the move from a low or the, from a high to at least a peak D or trough D. In this particular instance, look at the work that the GDX did. It went from, right here, it went from a low that was made back on the 12th of May at 29.66. It goes peak A, peak B, peak C1, peak C2, and then it uh, goes under the 14 period moving average and the nine period exponential moving average and pops to D and then pulls back. And then I didn't do this. I thought I had, I think I did it in gold. In the, in a, in the pattern that I talk about, since this is technical Friday, look, if I go from there to that trough and I go to the right, so that'll become green. At the moment it's red but or pink, new. And I put that in. I change that to pink because it was going up. Look how short it, it look at look at the effort it took to go to a peak D. Normally look what you get. Huge moves up to a D. This is the tiniest little thing and cramped. It makes the arch formation takes out the left side low of the twelfth of May, which is twenty nine sixty six. It goes down to twenty uh, let's see, twenty nine thirty four. And now it's struggling. So the GDX is telling me you've got to be a little bit careful here in the sense that the move to the upside, while it's it's really impressive that under the conditions that uh, gold is is holding well, while the dollar has moved up so fantastic, it went to 105.01, pulls back in the, in the dollar index, it goes to 105. Is that correct? 105. Yes, 01. And now we're looking at the 15th of June. This is over a month later. It goes to 105.79. Uh huh. 105.79. And what happens is look, this is the dollar index. 
The technicals here aren't anywhere close to as good as they were before, but they are still quite good. Uh, this high right here, look, at, look, the MACD was strong, stochastic was strong, on balance volume was strong. Uh, no, sorry, no on balance volume because it's, it's an index. But look what happened here. The MACD is good. Stochastic was good, but now it's under 80%. And um, the 9 is still way above the 14. So the dollar is showing really good technical strength. And the weekly chart is still showing absolutely fabulous strength. I've got it as a T slash C in the weekly chart. And as a leg C in the monthly chart, it should still go at some point higher to a leg D. So I'm coming back to gold in a moment. The gold right now is down 6 at 8. What do people think about uh, Dow is down uh, 58. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman, and we're looking at the GDX. I'm just making a couple of changes here to the technicals, uh, as, a, as I would deem appropriate, having moved like this uh, since the last time I did that cancel. There we are. Yeah, so what I am looking at here is we are in with this particular candle that we're looking at, Chapman Wave Roman candle, from this week in the weekly chart. All right, I might have to go to my clicky mouse. Let's just do this. There we go. There. Okay. So what we're looking at is very quickly in the gold contract, this is a continuous gold contract. We went from low of the 16th of May at 1791. We're in peak A, P, P, peak C for a while, then a peak D. Look at the 200 period moving average. Look at that resistance. It goes up to a leg E. And that was on uh, June the 13th at 1882.5. 
pulls back sharply, didn't take out the left side low, so in a sense that that's so far a successful H pattern. But look at the effort that it took just to get to a leg E, and it's not even close to breaking the really important high that was made on a pop-up the 5th of May of, uh, that's 1916. So I would say that when, when and if the gold contract starts to trade, it can't just pop up and, and do what it did before and then fail. If it can hold above 1900, that'll be the first sign. And that'll almost certainly say to me, there's a chance now that the dollar could start a, a bigger digester phase. I mean, when you think 105.79 to yesterday's low of 103.42, a, a little over two points, so it's just nothing uh, because the technicals are still suggesting money is flowing into, um, into the dollar, EUR, USD. Look at this. Um, had a nice spike yesterday, and what I said was, yes, it's a spike, but unless it can continue high into the 1.65 area, 1.065 area, it's at 1.046 right now, uh, it's not good. Look how it's pulled back again. This is the euro-dollar currency pair. Look at the yen, uh, USDJPY. Look at this currency pair. Look at that. It made a peak C. I said, I, I, there's no other way I can count it. It's a P. Oh, this is what I was talking about. There was a chance that this Chapman Wave instant restart at peak D. I've seen this happen so many times over the last year and a half. Where even though you had a full peak A, peak F, and even a G, and then a very sharp time-wise pullback, not a price move, but a lengthy time of a pullback, and then a brand new, this is like the stochastics under 10%, under, sorry, 20%. Magni turns around. Nine period moving average moves back over the 14 period in the US dollar, Japanese yen, currency pair. Everything here was extremely bullish. Even the pullback didn't even affect the nine at all. And that just says that the, Euro, the yen still has a lot of strength left and it should go to a leg D above 135. I think it was 59. Let me just check. What was the high? Uh, 135. Yep, 15, 59. And it should break above that to a leg D. And then maybe next week we start we start to see the dollar and the uh, yen pull back some. So I i don't want to mess around uh, looking at um, uh, stuff that I haven't, uh, I don't really have a, a, a good sense of, of the reversal action other than to say until the yen starts to trade at 130.50 or lower, so far, the action to the upside seems to be, the, 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 the trajectory still seems to be to the upside. Aha. Now what I want you to do is a question came in. Could I look at OIH? Oh, I didn't finish the GDX. Sorry. Just to say the GDX, it's not bad. And when you think that the dollar has gone to um, multi-year highs, this is still very good action. And this tells me that gold, I always look at gold as a currency of fear. It is the geopolitical gold icon that huge investors, I'm talking about countries, I'm talking about banks, I'm talking about the very, very wealthy. That's where, that's where money drifts, historically. And yes, there's been other things, you've had uh, alternatives like a Bitcoin, etc. We got out of, completely out of our Bitcoin, we had huge gains down. I'm not there yet. I think there will be a trade in Bitcoin, but I just don't see it at this particular moment at 20,365. So the geopolitical scene says, still says to favor gold. And I think that's, and remember I spoke a long time ago, I said, I like to keep, I used to call them four, that's uh, oily, uh, sorry, um, bondy for bonds, Vixy for the VIX index, um, Dolly for the dollar and uh, Bondi, Vixi Oily is another one. Why Why am I forgetting that one? Bondi, Vixi, Oily and I'll get to it in a moment. But in the meantime, I added oil for Oily. And I've said, let's keep them all separate because if you can keep them separate, you can think independently about each one. They used to be very well tied together. When the volatility of market goes, when the market stocks were going down, you would see money flow into bonds as a safety factor. We haven't seen that 
I mean, just look at this, the TLT. High of 179 back in March of 2020, that was the market low. Then the market had this huge rally, but look at this. Since, the, since November, December, January, when our market has been sailing to the downside, so have bonds. And look at the TNX, TNX.X, look at that. It's, it made new highs. Yes, it's in leg C, just like the dollar is in leg C in the monthly chart, and I think it will go to a D. My target is that orange line, which is at way back there. Oh, um, wow, 50. Well, the high in the TL, this is the 10-year Treasury bond. No, sorry, this is the 10-year yield. Uh, yeah, the high was 53.16. It gets smoothed out. But 53.16, and we're at 32.7. Now, I don't know if it's going there. All I can say is that I mean, I mean, leg C in the monthly chart, <clears throat> and there should be a D. That's what I'm going to say. There should be higher yields to come. All right. With that said, I have a couple of other questions. Could I look at the IBB? So the IBB made a dreaded H pattern. I went to peak A, peak B, peak C, and there's your D. And then it pulled back. Also, a very small move to the upside. I do not like small moves to the upside to a D, because especially if it's underneath the previous major high, because it always uh, fail, not always, but most of the time it will fail and retest a significant low. Well, the dreaded H low was tested, and now it's at 108.80. I think it's getting ready for the chance of a move to the upside. There's an alternate count. That's a C and a D now, a second uh, cell mode in the uh, weekly chart. C, and there's your D. Oh, look at this. Uh, you remember I drew this in a long time ago. I drew this incredible arch formation. That was a load back in uh, March. I think it was a 2020. Right. Hey, what happened? Did I just lose it? You know, I, I, I changed mice. And the next thing I know, uh, let's see, font. Uh, no, no, I don't want that. I want to click this. Yes. So let me see. Status line, uh, pending trading app. I went to the right. Where does it say? General uh right axis there it is well i don't know how that missed there it is right axis back again so look at this the low that was made back in so the low that was made in march 2020 and then it makes 174 high in february and then it comes back to a low in may of 2021 that was my midpoint and what have we done we've moved to the uh, okay. We've, moved, we've got two weeks to go to ta tackle that left side low of 9215. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors.
biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold. Traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi, folks, we're back. So I just wanted to show this. I can't remember if I actually looked at it with the iShares Global Timber and Forest for ETF plummeted in the last two weeks. Uh, below the support level, it's down at 74.38, uh, uh, down 80, uh, 80 cents. And the uh, the Philadelphia Housing Index is down five at 332.75. Uh, that's that's not good action at all. And you've got um, the yields. Yeah, they're pulling back a little bit today. But look at this, 3.472 on the uh, um, on the 30 year and the the blue, the cyan, went above. I mean, that, this is this is not usually a good sign. So let's close out of that and go to some of the questions. We were looking at the IBB. And what I wanted to just show you in the IBB was, oh, look at this. This is that peak D in the uh, one-minute chart. Ran up to the 37.10. We made an arch formation, same time, same price value. Comes down and takes it out in two bars, shorter, that was the left side low of uh, it took out in 30, 3667 at 1021. And now we're trying to form some kind of a base. But if you look at the 10 minute chart, look at that 200 period moving average resistance. And that was a gray peak A because that peak C1, C2 uh, was not pierced. So that's a failure pattern. Took it out and did a one to one to the downside. This is really important. The whole 336. Uh, 50, 36, 40 area in the um, E-mini. It's going to be absolutely imperative to watch. This is a, a day where <clears throat> options and futures uh, expiration uh, occurs. Anything can happen. <laughs> can, can there be, <coughs> excuse me, can, let me have something to drink here. Can there be a reversal later today rather than acceleration down? Remember, there were two scenarios. The scenario that I think would be the best scenario would be to have a lousy close today and then bad news over the weekend and then a whopper of a pullback on Tuesday. And then we can try to make a V-shaped recovery that says this time we've got a really decent low. But as I said before, you've still got the problem with crude oil. You've still got the problem with higher, higher rates. You've got inflation all over the show. So I can only call it a temporary, but I'm beginning to look at some areas that are just now starting to show a little bit of, a little bits of signs that they're not taking out the left side low. A number of, of stocks and, and one or two ETFs have not taken out that left side low from May in the arch formation, and I consider that to be a good sign. <laughs> we'll see what happens. The market doesn't hear me. It's just doing its own thing. And as I said, this beautiful arch formation going over a three-year, uh, two-year period, uh, this is what we're looking at. And... So far, the IBB, the Rus this is the iShares of the uh, NASDAQ biotech area ETF. <clears throat> it needs to get, it's at 109. Over the next three weeks, it needs to start trading in the 120s. That's a long way to go. Although, look how quickly it pulled back from the 119 area. So that's the IBB. The next question I had was uh, Amazon. Yep, look at Amazon. <clears throat> Hasn't taken, yes, an example that I'm using. It has not taken out the doji low that was made uh, on the 24th of May of 101.26, even though I've been very negative Amazon for quite a while, actually. Um, the fact that it's held that is a little bit of a sign of positiveness, but the fact that the 
arch formation never produced a very sharp rebound, but just a minor one says, oh, you got to be careful because just a hop, skip, and a jump to take out that, or it would, what would it be, a hop, skip, and a, and a, a dive, to take out the low 101.26 that was made on the 24th. Uh, a couple of questions I had. I said I'd look at something today, and that was, we were looking, oh, did I write it down? Uh, yes, Triple M. We were looking at Triple M yesterday. Oh, another bad day. Down almost two at 129 round number at this particular point. Uh, the low so far today is 128.90. Uh, this is the H pattern in a very unsuccessful way. And what I said is if the 120, I think I said 126. If the 126 ish area goes, then it's going to be very difficult for Triple M, 3M company trading at MMM. Trading at 182, 128.92 down to not to get close to the low that was made in March of 2020, 114. And since that period, it's been up at the uh, uh, 2 210 area. I mean, what a move! It's got, got you know not yet cut in half, but that's a big move. The other one I said I'd look at was oh SPXU. Had a call to ask about it, and I said just in terms of money management, if you it just if you're getting just a little bit nervous, stay in the position, but you can take a little bit off just, you know, if you want, and you can just plan to put it back. This I've got this as a leg C. It's actually extended today. This is the S&P ProShares Ultra, Ultra, Ultra. What is it exactly called? These things have such fancy names. Uh, Ultra Pro uh, S&P 500, short. So it's doing very well. It's in leg D in the weekly chart. So this is the place that you could have been in and just held and not worried about any of the bounces or anything to, <coughs> anything to do with the upside other than the upside of the short position because the market was going down. Doing very well right now at 23.01. Another question came in. Could I look at, um, oh, oh, what was, oh, oh that's right, high-grade copper. High grade copper. Oh, taking out the left side low at 4.00. Hey, this is not good news at all. <coughs> Excuse me. This is a peak D in the arch formation, taking out the left side low in a much quicker time frame. This is now a leg C in the weekly chart. 5.06 was the high back in something like March of 2020 of this year. And here we are at 4.00. So copper continuous contract, uh, still only a peak C in the monthly chart, but wow, we can do a, you know, I, I don't like the fact that wood, this is the iShares Global and Timber Forestry ETF, and copper, which had held so well up until three weeks ago, are now really acting very poorly. Next thing we're going to look at is, going to look at telephone. Uh, uh, Bob wants to look at telephone. Uh, you know, I... I, I I think you just said look at telephone, but not not um, do any um, whether you're short or long. So made a peak C1, C2. That's like a double top in the Chapman wave uh, back in uh, late May, early June, in the in the 21 was it 21.53 area on the 26th of May, uh, trading now at 19 under the 200 period exponential moving average. I think that these um, the the area of you know, telephone, AT&T, as a dividend company, yes, it's okay. But I'm I'm looking at these dividend companies in the telecommunications area and saying, you know, at some point, there's going to be a lot of, of switchover, especially if the market keeps coming down. People are going to say, I don't want to pay these high bills. I want to find alternatives. So the Comcast, which was one of my favorites uh, going into uh, 2022, then turned around very sharply, just over 60, and now it's been cut almost in half. It's a 38, made a peak D, a very a quick A, B, C, D to the upside, and then pulls back sharply. This is now an alternate count. This is now a, a G, B. This is, a, this is an egg C to the downside in the weekly chart. I'm a little, I, I'd be very cautious. And, oh, oh, of course, I had a lot of calls yesterday, and I had questions that I, and I didn't get to. So I said that I think that this is going to be a, a continuous notation in the chap wave and that is probably more like an F than a B at 182.40 on the 8th of June with a little doji candle in CVX Chevron. Well, it's gone from this company from 182 to 147. Look at that turnaround. And that, that's another reason why I think getting close to suck up the rally in the general market. 
see the oil sauce pull back. I'll be back. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, well, folks, we're back. And we're looking at the Dow down 235, 225, the SP down 22. And we're looking at Exxon. Look, Exxon made that top in the 105 area, and now it's at 86. Look how quickly it's gone to the downs. Look how long and many bars it took to the upside. Whoops, look to the downside. So this is just telling me that in the area of the energy, let's say look at XLE, XLE, Duffy wants to know, yep, there's your peak F doji candle at the high of 90, 90, 93, is it? Yeah, 93.31 uh, on the 8th of June. And look at this from, 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 from 93 area to 73, 20 points, whoops, just like that. So there are many signs that I'm looking at that are not – your traditional signs for a low that should be made, and it could be coming in fairly soon, but it's really the individual stocks that I'm looking at, and I think that that's really the area that, that to me, is most important. So with that said, we're about to wrap up. You're going to have a long weekend. I hope you enjoy the weekend, and uh, you've got great programming coming up. You've got uh, Larry Pesavento coming up next. You've got uh, Think or Swim. You've got That's Fast Money. You've got... Uh, Steve Rhodes, Steve recorded his show this morning at 8, so it'll be replayed at, at uh, his 1 o'clock time, 2 o'clock. You've got uh, Dave White, it should be a wonderful show. And Dave, of course, this is today's options exploration. We want to hear what Dave is going to say later in the day today. It should be fascinating. And, of course, Tom O'Brien is correctly considered that this market is highly vulnerable 
and he's been looking at the downside correctly. So have a wonderful weekend and check out my opening call, my daily newsletter. I'm just about to wrap it up and let me just do a real quick thing here. I want to say that the VIX index will be your clue because it is options expiration. Anything can happen. So the VIX trading at 32.86. If it starts to go into the 34th late today as the market remains very weak, that could start to see acceleration down today and make it happen. So some kind of external if the fix starts to slip up to 317 point low and the market starts to work sharply thousand after points of the time. Have a wonderful day. See you on 